Softening removes calcium and magnesium, but reintroduces sodium and chloride. So the higher level of hardness in your water, the more sodium and chloride will be left in your drinking water. This is why we stress the importance of a reverse osmosis after softening to remove any sodium and chloride, especially for people who are on sodium restricted diets. Okay, so what you're saying, just so everyone understands this, it's usually that little tap beside the sink that runs be between the three little cylinders RO, reverse osmosis, for drinking water. Correct, correct. For your kettle, uh, one thing I've learned is the RO water for my kettle has kept it clean. And that was always a visual indicator to me to see that, because I just opened up the tap, filled it up, you know, boiled, and before I knew it, it was so white, it was ridiculous, to the point where I actually poured from it, but it looked like the cloudiest water I've ever seen into <laughs> my coffee. And my mind's going, it's okay, you're a contractor, you can drink this. Well, think about a kettle. You've heard of the method of filtration called distillation? A distiller? Yes. Basically, a water distiller boils water. What a distiller does is it boils water, but it condenses the steam. The steam is the purified water that we collect and use. What's left in the bottom are all of the dissolved solids, the heavy metals, the minerals, and such. Hence all the white. Hence all of the white. Right. Like I was caking it off. I could literally scrape it and pull so out when, white chunks. When you're boiling yeah. your kettle, what you actually want is coming out of the spout. Is that right? That's the best one. This is why we want to treat it before it gets to your kettle. Okay.